Good evening, wrestling fans. Welcome to Evolution of Pro Wrestling. We are your host, Lewis, the Encyclopedia of Pro Wrestling. And I'm Jay, the Wiz Kid of Pro Wrestling. Oh, always a great introduction. Uh, we got Curly Mo over here. You know, you got the uh, Major Mo. You know, know him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, wrestling fans, for joining us. As always, um, today's going to be an amazing topic. It feels good to be back. Last oh, week yeah. it was my son's birthday. You know, the one five fifteen. Oh my God, Lord be with me. Um, <laughs> but we had fun. We had fun. He enjoyed himself, and um, we enjoyed it. So thank you, fans, for joining us. Uh, James Archer, what's going on, brother? How you doing? Um, today uh, we want to we want to touch some base before we get into our topic. Um, first off, we want to throw out there um, from the evolution of pro wrestling family, the wrestling world lost a pretty unique individual very hardcore style of professional wrestling. He was the originator of ECW, Extreme Championship Wrestling. I'm talking about New Jack. The man passed away a couple of days ago. Um, many people are saddened to see him go. The man was real. He was as real as it gets. As it gets. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, like, really as it gets. You know, so our condolences to him and his family. It was definitely. And also, there has been a lot of talk about the Usos winning the tag team titles and finally forming the bloodline now that Jimmy Uso is back. What do you think about that? That is crazy. You know, especially with this new Roman Reigns theme song, you know, you got the Usos behind him. Now you got to Now you got both of them. So. Oh man, that's listen, just crazy right there. Listen, imagine it, the destruction they could do if they, you know, like literally become like what they are. When it, when, when I say that, if we could see some triple threat. Yes, and with Don them, uh, Cor Corno. Crazy. Yes, Don also was a tragedy. Was a tragedy to the wrestling world. Yes, you're absolutely right. And we just found out today. I found out this information through our fan, our friend, your godfather Brian. WWE effective beginning, I believe it's July 17th, they are going back to live events. They are letting fans come into the arena. How? Like, wow. Like, that's going to be a that's pop. That's right going to be, that's going to be, it's interesting, but I'm looking forward to how it's to dangerous how at about. the same time due to the issue with I mean, COVID. But AEW does the same yeah, thing. Yeah, but let's though. see, let's see, let's see how we can get it done. You know, it, it, it that would it, it, it would be great. It would be amazing. We, we, we would love it. And you know what's going to be even more greater is the topic we have in hand today. Woo! Many yeah. people, we have spoken about this man on two occasions. Many times. But we have never, ever spoken about the top 10 matches, in our opinion, that he did good. And yep, and yet yeah, you're right, James. I, ho I, I hope I hope Raw gets better. I ho hope Raw de definitely does get better. Yeah, SmackDown's on top right now. So we're talking about the Phenom, the Undertaker. Tonight we are going to be talking about ten of the the top ten of the Undertaker's greatest matches. Now, Jaden, when you talk about the Undertaker. What comes to mind? Ah, oh, man. I see a scary, tall man. It's crazy. You know, The Undertaker is probably one of the greatest wrestlers to ever step inside of a wrestling ring. And, you know, Undertaker has it all. He has the strength, the agility. He's fast in the ring. And he's a tall guy. He's tall and he was a big guy. And for him to do the stunts that I've seen him do, which, you know, some of the stunts are in this list... It's absolutely crazy. So, you know, Undertaker is definitely one of the legends in my books. And Undertaker, Undertaker is one of the guys that I enjoy most about wrestling. Because he actually made wrestling come out like it was supposed to. And he was actually being, you know, the character that they gave him. And he did it amazing. There can never be another dead no, man. No, there can never be another dead man. There can never be another dead, dead man, man or listen, any character. The dead, man, the dead man is a one-of-a-kind character. That's that's just the phenom is my favorite. Though. The phenom, the of phenom course. Is my you know, um, James says Mark Calloway, 
um, came to mind and the skyscrapers, of course, because that's what it, that's what he was in WCW. In WCW, he was he was mean Mark Calloway, and I he I believe he he teamed up I think with Sis Vicious or Dan Spivey. It's some guys you don't know, um, but he that he was a big that they would consider the big tag team. But when you're told in professional wrestling, you're not gonna amount to anything. That kind of takes a toll on you. So Undertaker said, okay, I'm going to go elsewhere. I'm going to see what I can do. And, you know, at first he went, you know, they, he went to WWE. They said they didn't have anything right now. You know, yada, yada, yada. Then, eventually, Vince McMahon called him and said, is this The Undertaker? <laughs> Just like that. And that's when The Undertaker was born. They showed him the character. They showed him the costume. They showed him how to do it, the makeup and everything. It was insane. And it was, it, that was smooth when it all started. sailing from there. Smooth like butter. Just like that. When he debuted at Survivor Series 1990. That was when the Undertaker era started. Now, when you talk about the Undertaker, the Undertaker had a whole bunch of errors. He had the Phenom. He had the Lord of Darkness. But then he also had, which we are going to announce in this first match, in the top 10, number 10, the six-man Armageddon Hell in a Cell. The Undertaker, the American Badass, Kurt Angle, Rikishi, Triple H, Stone Cold, and The Rock. <laughs> Jaden, come on. Six oh, of the man. greatest superstars, six of the greatest wrestlers that has ever stepped foot in a WWE ring. I mean... Come on. Come on. I mean, you're right. Those are all legends in the ring right all, there. Every single all one of them legends. is a legend all of them. in the ring. Absolutely all of them. Yeah, I did it for The Rock. <laughs> I did it for The Rock. That's, that's pretty much... Um, that's uh, the Rock making fun of uh, Rikishi, because he did. Because Rikishi ran ran over the Rock. Oh, um, well, aren't they related? Yeah, they're cousins. Look, uh, they're definitely what, cousins. One thing I can say about the Samoan family: they have more cousins than anyone in this world combined. <laughs> no, they 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 an excellent. They got family, a big though. family though. Yes, they got the a Samoans, big family, yes. and they listen. That family. Stays together always. You know, there's this without a shadow of a doubt that family. Stays and it's crazy together. though, literally, because I know. I mean, like this is the Undertaker we're talking about here. But like to be honest, though, you know, when you see wrestling, you always see the Samoans either with one Samoan or, you know, it's just always a Samoan tag team going on with two Samoans, and most likely they're related. But you know, let's get back to the match at hand. Yes. Let's get back to the so, Jaden, you see these six superstars. We've played this over and over. We've played this match in a watch party before. We saw the match. You saw how brutal it was. Oh, man. Tell us about it. Tell us what impact The Undertaker had in this match. Undertaker was wrecking havoc in that match. Undertaker was just going after everyone. And, you know, I feel like um, that Undertaker was more of the ruthless Undertaker. You know, the one that went for all the power moves and the one, you know, that had no regret. <laughs> Anything. Excuse me. I feel like you know the Well Undertaker threw pr pretty much pretty much threw Rakishi off the cell. He did on from the from the top, right? Was yes. From the top. And, and, he, and he went into a truck. Yes. I, and remember, he, he's he's also that. famous for doing something else, but we're gonna get to that later. That comes later. But with that match, it was just brutal. Like everybody was a bloody mess. Kurt Angle, who was a rookie at the time, um, ended up Winning the match that was crazy. like it, it was I just, but I feel like that was a good push for him though. No, that it was. was a good way it definitely off. was. It definitely was a good push for him. And I, and to pick those people in that match was great too. No, that was amazing. To pick the it people was simply to, to put amazing. Kurt Angle in the ring with some legends. Yes, off the, in the back of a truck. Exactly, exactly. he got yeah, thrown off the cell on the back of a, of a truck. truck. And it was just crazy with that the way that was the way that was happening. You know, I feel like I feel like with the Undertaker, there's just basically different stages to him. He evolved, and when I say that, because you know, the first time the Undertaker came in, you know, he was the rookie. The you know, he was very young. He was very 1990, young. And the second the second in. character he took on was the ruthless character. Mm -hmm. The character, you know, I'm a wreck everything. 
third character, I'm pretty sure it was the Phenom or the Dead Man. I'm pretty sure it was the Dead Man. That was when he was more skilled. The Phenom is just the GOAT. Yeah. He's just a legend. See, that's a, that's a good point, James. Uh, Angle surprised him that that night, and he did too. He surprised me too. With that match, I I wouldn't surprised. Yeah, I wasn't surprised. thinking he was gonna win that match. He surprised me. You know, I, I didn't did think WWE think was gonna give him the ball and run with it. I, I, I was. I guess I was, they potential. In no, it. I was really surprised. I was surprised but, too. I thought they would have gave it to. But somebody. he did but it. He deserved it though. He really did deserve that. No, and, and it was a good match. It was an amazing match. Yes, the Ministry of Darkness. Was, that was, was a good undertaker. Yeah, that was a good undertaker. The With Brothers the of Destruction undertaker was. Oh favorite. man, like like the when you talk about the undertaker, you have many it's like, undertakers there's to many, favorite. Like course. there's many characters of him. So there's many stories so about difficult. the undertaker. Exactly. Like it, it's hard <clears throat> not to choose. Exactly, a character. it's so hard. But when That's you hear that saying. match, you know you look at it like, holy shit, like yeah, where is everyone? I don't where is everyone? Well, where is everybody at? Yeah. That's what he asks. Where is everyone? I don't know. I don't know. I get, I, I'm, I'm, everybody just gone. They didn't feel like coming in. or the, You know, they just chilling. But we're going to enjoy the show anyway. So, um, you know, we'll have a three-way three, a three uh, way conversation here. Me, you, and James, you know? Who that? Who that? <laughs> Luis Olenio. How's it going, brother? Welcome. Mr. EGCW owner and CEO. And we are his uh, commentary team. We'd love to have him on the show. What's going on, brother? Um, he got some amazing uh, stuff coming up. You guys need to tune in. Oh, man. Oh, wait a minute. Here's a, here's a question. James says, what if what if Taker went to WCW? I don't think Taker would have been that famous. WCW would have never knew what to do with an Undertaker. Nah. If they didn't know what to do with Mark Calloway. And that was Mark Calloway. Yeah, that was... Imagine The Undertaker. The Phenom. The American Badass. Yeah, I, I agree. The Ministry of... They the wouldn't. Lord of Darkness. There was no way that they were going to be able to handle that man. Not at all. I agree. You know? So... <clears throat> it was yeah, a waste they of time. They, 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 the Undertaker wasn't going to jump. That, that just wasn't going to happen. Well, then I got a question for you, though. Yeah. What, would have, what do you think would have happened if The Undertaker era started early? <sighs> what do you think? Where do you think his career would have been at? Right I don't now? know. That's a good question. If his career started early. Well, James says 1997 Taker versus NWO. I don't know. I, I don't think that would have worked. I, honestly, in that in that time, with the way the Undertaker was formatted as the Ministry of Darkness and stuff like that, it wouldn't have worked out. Yeah. Well, see, Taker and Sting maybe. That would. I, May, I would maybe. Seen that. Maybe that would. Sting though? Are we talking about? Uh the Crow. Maybe it would have, but it would have. I, I don't like know. I I I, th I think I think personally that the Undertaker's WrestleMania streak was more it was important. In, I agree. Than going to WCW, 100%. and when we talk about WrestleMania streak, we talk about number nine on the list: The Undertaker versus Batista. Batista. WrestleMania twenty three. The streak. Versus the world heavyweight, heavyweight title. Oh that man, match. that, was that like, match everybody wanted Batista to see. Batista gets he speared him off the stage. He, I'm he sure. no, he he grabbed him. Uh, he did yeah, something. He, did. he, he speared, did him, speared off him off the stage, off the stage. and then you know all the the uh, things like started. It wasn't really fireworks, but you know like yeah, like, no, it was a stuff. brutal match. I see. That yeah, match oh, was yeah. brutal. 100%. They had some brutal matches in the like. Last man standing, so I had on the was, cell. Was crazy. Like it was brutal matches, man. Like I still could see that match. Yeah, but see, yeah, but see, and that was back then, you know. Like that was that was when Batista was really good at wrestling. That was no, Batista. That's when Batista was known. But you was you wasn't getting over the Undertaker. Nah. That, that just wasn't happening. Now, Dad, I got a question for you. Though. Yeah. What if we seen Undertaker versus two thousand five Batista? Batista mm. evol not Batista's evolution after he broke up with he the broke evolution. out from evolution yes that would have been um I feel like that match would have been crazy that would have uh, if we would have seen that Batista ah oh, man God knows what would have happened in I don't match. know James I I I kind of kind of disagree with you on that one he says take his best match of many besides uh, uh uh HBK I don't know mm, um I mean, but the Batista mm. match I don't know I think. We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. I I'm going to give you my opinion on that one, but I'm going to tell you why I disagree with that. But that match, listen, that match with Batista and Undertaker was an excellent match. I was just upset that they put that match instead 
and they put John Cena and Shawn Michaels at the main event. Yeah, I, don't I listen. Not taking uh, anything away from Shawn and John at all. I don't think they should have put that as. But the last I one. think personally, Undertaker as the, the the phenomenal athlete that he is, especially since he, he was, had the WrestleMania and the track strength. record that he has at WrestleMania. Exactly. That would have been a perfect way to end it with him beating Batista and standing on top. I don't think that should have happened. You put him on like third or fourth, like come on. Yeah, that was. That's the Undertaker. Come on, now you got. But I also understand, Undertaker was doing business. That's what business. He's giving back to the business. The business said, "Okay, let's go on third. Yada yada yada. Okay, we got you. Bah, boom boom boom." I mean, he was, you know, he, Undertaker was still getting his pop, or he was popular, of course. But you know, Undertaker was still growing at the time too. So that's probably why they did that to him. Yeah, no, no, it, it, it was definitely. Uh, but you know, it was all worth it at the end of the day. Honestly, it was all worth it. Yeah, no, it, it was. It was a good, it was a good ride, you know. And with him, with that match with Batista, and I know I gotta disagree with with that uh, with that statement of Taker and Taker Roman. Taker Roman, nah. Because I feel like Roman should have been the one to end the streak. Listen, let me tell you wrong. something. I'm gonna I'm gonna t- I'm gonna give you my do's and don'ts about that match. And the reason I'm gonna say that because that match is on this list. And I'm going to explain to you why and why we put this match on the list. So, Jaden, what did you think of Batista and The Undertaker when they fought for that match? What if the what if the, the roles were reversed? What if, what if Batista would have won and ended the streak? Oh. Uh, I'm going to say sorry to the missus. <laughs> <laughs> um... I don't know. Actually, I really don't. I really wouldn't know what would have happened if the streak would have got ended. I feel like that streak had a lot to do with Undertaker's character because, you know, that was the Undertaker, the only man to go on like a 21 win streak Mm -hmm. without losing a single WrestleMania match. And WrestleMania goes by years. You don't have a you don't have two WrestleManias in one year. I know That's what I'm saying. That's years going on. Listen to me, to me and. I know I'm going to get some criticism over this, but to me, Undertaker's winning streak was far better than Goldberg's undefeated streak. I agree. I, I don't care what anybody me says. Me neither. I, I really don't. That, that's true. That's the really streak true. signified what wrestling was back in the days. And yes, James, I agree with you 100%. The streak should have never ended. He should have retired with the streak. But as I said... You gotta get back to the business. I mean, you should have seen the faces they had. And the, oh man, I, that was I, when I saw that match. I, I couldn't believe it. I, I had a a crazy. That was face. the first time I ever had the WWE Network, and they and and they 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 give it to me by that by, by making him lose. I seen it. <laughs> yeah, I seen it on YouTube. I was upset. I was just. But I shocked. knew it was for the business. I still feel. But if they were gonna end the streak, I feel like Roman Reigns should have been the guy no. to do it. Not Brock no. Lesnar. I feel Shawn Michaels should have did it. Shawn Michaels, but Shawn Michaels was retired at the time. No, but that's what I'm saying. But but you're right. I think Roman. See, look, should've... look. I'm saying Roman because he was the one wrestling at the time. Yes. I'm talking about the wrestlers that was wrestling at the time. Okay. If Shawn, I feel like Shawn should have been the one to end it. Yes, Shawn was the perfect man to do that. But wrestling at that time, Roman was the perfect person to do that. <clears throat> Instead of Brock Lesnar. No, absolutely. And that Brock and Undertaker. Match now listen, ridiculous. Undertaker has faced many, many great superstars. When he's fought Batista, it was amazing the match it was. Mm-hmm. And then you talk about the next match, which is the number eight on our list, WrestleMania 36, The Undertaker, the American Badass, <laughs> against AJ Styles in a boneyard in a boneyard match. To me. I didn't think The Undertaker still had it. I didn't think he did either. It was a good match. It was a good way to to finish his career. Because within the match, not only did he have an opposition of Luke Harper and... Uh, I'm sorry, Luke Harper. God rest his soul. Of Luke Gallows and um, Carl Anderson. I believe that Carl Anderson, right? I'm pretty sure, yeah. yeah. They were interfering in that match. 
And AJ Styles took it upon us, took it upon himself. He came, he opened up the, the casket and all that stuff. You know, I don't know how you do that because that that's, that just gave me the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, he did it, and it was a great entrance. It was. Then the Undertaker came with the American badass, the vest, the boots, the the bandana, the braid. I couldn't believe it. The motorcycle. I, it was amazing. When I seen it that, it was amazing. I did not when you saw that, I I'm sure that. I was shocked. That wrestling fans were. Like just completely at all. Imagine if they were in the arena, though. Oh man, it it, it, it would have been amazing. It would have been That's what amazing. I'm saying. I feel like they should have. I mean, they needed something good, but I feel like they should have waited for that match. No, but that's what I'm saying. That it was a good match, and that's because that's when COVID had just started. So, this match to me, on top on the on the number eight spot was a good match what did you think of this match when you saw this it? match was a really good match like you said i did not expect the undertaker to still have that and undertaker put on a good show with aj styles and yeah that match was a really excellent match i enjoyed that match 100 percent. it was good um undertaker did his thing aj styles did his thing so yeah it was an excellent match from those two now do you think anybody else could have pulled it off Hmm. With the Undertaker, with what have been more scary was the Fiend. Bray, if Bray I don't Wyatt know. Did, I, I I think I feel like he. I, see, look, I'm gonna tell you why though. I feel like the Fiend could have did it because this is the reason why. It, it probably would have been by a long shot, but you know, Undertaker could have came out the casket. The Fiend could have came out of the dirt, you know, dressed in like a zombie type gear, and then these two could have went at it. Yeah, but that but that's what I'm saying. At the time, they were building up the character of Bray Wyatt. See, no, that's what I'm saying. You know, what if so, what, that's what, you asked if anybody could top that? That's what I'm saying. I don't the know. Fiend I, now, I, I, I no, like he, he definitely, he, yeah, he definitely would have been able to top that. You know, doing some myst, my, mystical stuff, um, the way they did with the with the Inferno match, that which was, was crazy. crazy. Um, but yeah, it definitely would have worked. But it's like uh, now. Mm, Back then, if you would have had the Lord of Darkness against Bray Wyatt, then I think that would have worked for okay. sure. Okay. So, I but Jaden, before we announce our number seven spot, let's tell our wrestling fans to uh, share all our content all over social media. Bring in your friends and family all over the social media. Everyone. Yes, bring them in for this awesome topic. The Undertaker's top ten greatest matches of all time. Now, Jaden, I'm going to allow you to announce the next match. So, next match we got is Taker versus Stone Cold. Ooh. SummerSlam, Austin, 1998. Austin 316. Stone Cold Steve Austin, 1998. WWF World Heavyweight Championship. The match was awesome. It was a good match. I seen the match. Stone Cold won the match fair and square. He did. But the rivalry that was insane. between those two was insane. Jaden, tell us about Stone Cold Steve Austin. How much of an opponent opponent was he for Stone for the Undertaker? Listen, Stone Cold will give anybody a fight. Stone Cold is just that type of guy. He never quits when it comes to fighting, and Stone Cold will try to pick a fight with the toughest and baddest guys on the planet because that's just what Stone Cold was. So for him to take a shot at The Undertaker absolutely shocked me. And the rivalry these two carried was absolutely phenomenal. It was out of this world. And then the fact that he beat The Undertaker sent the big message from, from Steve Austin. That was absolutely insane. That, that proves, you know, Stone Cold was truly, you know, the man. And he actually was doing that. But... You know, Undertaker did his thing too. It wouldn't have been a good match without the Undertaker, without with Stone Cold and the Undertaker. No, it was so, amazing. It, it was, was great. It was an amazing was match. And when you see something like that, it's like, wow. That's that's pretty much a way for the Undertaker to pass the torch, and that's what the Undertaker did. Exactly. The Undertaker said, okay, Stone Cold's going to take the ball right now. But eventually, you know, he ended up becoming the world champion. Undertaker was world champion at a point. You know, and I'm like, okay, like, what's next? Right. Like, are you going to are you gonna give this man another title shot? Then what's going to happen? So it was, right. it was really good. It was really good seeing the Undertaker and Stone Cold fight at SummerSlam like that. Right. And when the Undertaker finally won the title... It was pretty much Stone Cold fighting back 
for the world title. So we're like, okay, let's do it. So Jaden, what if this match would have went any different? What if Undertaker would have won the WWF title at SummerSlam? Would Stone Cold still have been the legend he was? I feel like he would. And why is that? Because Stone Cold didn't need a title to prove how good he was. Yeah, but that's what made him the... the that's what made him that, yes. Of course, that's what made him Stone Cold. But I feel like he didn't need a... He, it was great for him to have a title because that just boosted his career big time. Mm-hmm. I feel like he didn't need one, though, because of the character he was already taking. You know, he was basically the anti of the, the business. He was just him. He didn't care. He would help the good guys. He would help whoever was necessary. And, you know, Steve Austin, you know, just didn't give a crap in the world. So that's what that's what made him. So I feel like it was great for him to win that. But I didn't really, I didn't, I, I think personally, he didn't need to win it. But that, by him winning that, boosted up his career a lot. Yeah, pretty much it would have. Now, we got another match on our number six spot. We were just talking about it. We were just this, talking too. about it. We were just talking about Roman this. Reigns against The Undertaker, WrestleMania 33. This match signified a lot of things. This was pretty much already to the point where Undertaker was already getting to his prime to... The, the, end, the ending of his the career. The ending of his career. Ending, ending of his career. You know, it's time to. It was time to put put up the boots. You know, we thought he did. I guess. But he eventually, he didn't. He went for another one. He went for another one. So this match with Roman Reigns was to signify Undertaker passing the torch over to Roman Reigns. My beef with this was. Why the hell did you not turn this man a heel back then? I was thinking that but, same thing. But I see now why they waited to pull the trigger. I mean, because when everything happened with COVID, wrestling was down. None of this virtual stuff was on it until they finally came up with it. Then fans started watching somewhat. They started going over there. What's going on, Joe? Um, that was WrestleMania 33. Um, then, when Roman Reigns came back, that's when viewership started coming back. And then now, this man is possibly the best heel in the I'm business. Gonna, I'm going to be honest. People can agree with me, but I feel like at that specific time, Roman Reigns saved WWE. Of course. Going in shreds. Of course. He's at that of specific course. time. There's only, he saved listen, him. there's only one beef I have with WWE right now. Zombies! Zombies. Was, I forgot to mention that in the beginning of the show too. Zombies. Was, come on. That was You went into an all time low of zombies, really? Come on. Because you wanted to promote Batista's video or game, whatever movie. Didn't like, they come have on. like a uh the And then match? then, then a, 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 a lumberjack run with a zombie match. And then to top it off, your superstar gets hurt. The Miz got hurt. I'm like, good Lord Almighty. Oh, uh, yeah, this was just a little accident. Well, other than that, with Roman Reigns, listen, with Roman Reigns, that's the best heel in the business right now. And that match that he had with The Undertaker at WrestleMania 33 signified his career skyrocketing. After that, it, there, was, there was no turning back for him. No turning back. You know, yeah, he got sick at a point, but he but came he back. It. He, he beat it, it came back. Came back strong. Then when COVID hit, he had to go away for a little bit because he wasn't going to risk it. But then, he played it smart, though. He played he it smart that he finally came back when he needed to. And it just, it, it threw, it was like an awe when he came back. And the match with him and Undertaker signified, like, damn, I made my name for myself. Now the Undertaker can ride off to the sunset. And that's what he did. He did. And it was a hell of a match, in my opinion. I feel like Undertaker was. wasn't too happy about it. But I think, in my opinion, it was a good match. You know what I mean? But one match that sticks out to me that started it all at WrestleMania was WrestleMania 7. Jimmy Superfly Snooker facing off against The Undertaker. That is when the streak was born. That's when it all began. You know Jimmy Superfly Snooker. That man is You've seen his matches with me. What did you think about that? That The Undertaker beat... Jimmy Snooker in the fashion that he did. He I pummeled mean, him. It was... 
Wow. Yeah, I don't know. It was crazy. I mean, like, I wasn't expecting The Undertaker, you know, to win as much as he did because, you know, we all know Superfly is a man of many he, talents. He, and I still remember when he splashed on a Don Morocco, was he, it? He splashed Don Morocco Don from Morocco the 15 foot high steel foot. cage. So, you know, I wasn't so expecting something, the, like, something that like that. Something like that, but he fought The Undertaker, who the Undertaker, was, his agility was the Undertaker had, off the chart. He like, had good agility. The Undertaker was tall, and that man was able to move. Mm -hmm. And when he I said he was able, able, to, able to, move. to move, he was able to move. So, yeah, and Undertaker, he, like you said, he pummeled him. Like, he, no, he definitely he pummeled messed, him. He messed up. And super. that's what caught the attention of Vince McMahon. And I like, feel like that's what... Let's make that's this a streak. Streak, exactly. Because then he beat Jake the Snake. Then he beat uh, um, Giant Gonzalez. And then he beat he uh, Dizu and Kane. And kept going. He just kept going. He just kept so going. So that's how it started. That's how his career got better. It was an ever ending And then it was just amazing. It was, it, was, it was an amazing match. And I'm glad The Undertaker got the streak going. I agree. You know, but we also talk about WrestleMania. And with this, is why, this is why we say The Undertaker is phenomenal. Because if anyone can put on a match with The Undertaker, you've made it. You've done something right. And one of those matches is... The Undertaker versus Edge at WrestleMania 24 for the World Heavyweight title. Jaden, Edge, rated R superstar. What do you see when you saw that match? Ed, Edge did his thing on that match. No, that was amazing. He, he did a lot of re reversals. Edge Great reversals. surprised like he, Yeah, he me. surprised me a lot. Edge surprised me. I was not Edge expecting that from showing him. showing out that match. I was There was things Edge was doing that I did not expect him to do. No, and he, that match surprised me. No, but he, he, he put on a great show. Like you, like you said, if you can put on a show with The Undertaker, Listen, he, you made it. No, he, he put on a great show. He and did. at a point, I thought he was going to win. And I know, that was, I know that was ridiculous to think. But he was really he on was fire. Going like on. his exactly. career he was, really was transcending going crazy. to new heights when he had Nick uh, Vicky Guerrero and uh, Zack Ryder and I, and I, I, and I, really I think it was well. uh, I forgot yeah. what was his other, this other guy's name. I forgot um, he was, he had another guy. But he had him. a trio. He had a trio with him, and eventually these these guys have been through it all. I've seen yeah, I've seen no, him it, and the other It was a good match. TLC matches, Hell in a Cell. Oh, yeah. These guys have been in it all. Oh yeah. So Edge was SummerSlam, Hell in a Cell. So it was amazing. If you guys haven't amazing. seen that match, you got to see that match. That match was amazing. And, he threw and Edge through the <clears throat> ring and the listen. Ring Edge the knew how to do business. He did, and that's what especially he did with, with the Undertaker. The Undertaker especially the Undertaker. He look at he was a lunatic going into the match with WrestleMania. And that's what we needed. We needed an edge that... And we needed that fire. That, that fiery, fiery edge, that furious exactly, edge. And that's exactly. what we got. That's what we got. And I am... I was still surprised. Because I, I never seen that side of Sorry, edge before. Dude. I'm scratching my arm. Like I'm a, like I'm a monkey. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, but yeah, no. it's a, it, it was an amazing match. 100%. And it's like, wow. Right. Like, how can you top that? Like, how, how can you top a match like that? But... I actually know how you can top a match like that with our number three on the countdown, Jaden. I'm going to allow you to announce this match because this match it. signifies something emotional and something overbearing with wrestling and world. This was the craziest thing I've ever seen The Undertaker do. Triple H versus The Undertaker, WrestleMania 28 and a Hell in hell a Cell. In a cell. And to top it all off, Shawn Michaels was the special guest referee. And for the people that don't know, in End of an Era, a big fun fact: Undertaker couldn't walk out of WrestleMania. No, that was WrestleMania twenty-seven. That was twenty-seven. 27. I thought that was twenty-eight. No, that was twenty-seven. Twenty? Are you sure? It was yes, 27? it was twenty-seven. It was WrestleMania twenty-seven. Which? Who did he face in that one? It's WrestleMania twenty-seven. Triple H. And then in Wait a minute. In <laughs> so they fought listen, each other in, twice. In, in WrestleMania 27, they fought each other in a no-holds-barred match. Undertaker was not able to walk out of the arena. That's what set up the so following match the okay, following so, year okay, when Undertaker felt match. he needed redemption in hell in a cell. I mean, that match was still crazy. I yes, mean, both matches were. Undertaker, both matches yeah. were. And then when they fought in hell in a cell with Shawn Michaels as the special guest referee... They just beat the living shit out of each other. Excuse my French. And then to top it off, 
you get super kicked, you get your, you get pedigreed, you get and you still get out. No, no, you get tombstoned. You, you get your own move used against you, and you still that was the that out. was the, that was the first ever encounter they had. Then the second time in Hell in a Cell, he got super kicked, pedigreed, and he still got out, and then still won the match. That right there was an end of an era. And I'm going to be honest here. I know people are going to disagree with me. But I feel like Triple H was the only person that can match The Undertaker in the ring. I said, When I say match, when I say match, Triple H was probably the only person that was able to keep up with Undertaker, The Undertaker the way The Undertaker would go by his move, his move set. Triple H knew Undertaker like the back of his hand. And that's why Triple H was probably one of his greatest rivals so, in this business. So, son, I, I, he's a great rivalry, but as far as chemistry, I got to disagree with you with that. Chemistry. Because when, when, you, when it comes up with stuff like that, like how to move with The Undertaker, I, I don't think that, yeah, maybe. But when you I talk about so. keeping up with The Undertaker, this the man that's able to keep up with The Undertaker is the one in our number two spot. Mankind. Okay, well. And The Undertaker. King of the ring hell in a cell by far to this day one of the most brutal matches i have ever ever seen like from tax from being thrown off a cage you get thrown, thrown through, through the, the cage thrown off the cell. have, a, have a, a a chair hit your mouth and have your tooth coming out your nose oh that was brutal so aye, aye. when you come up when, when when you mention a match like that how and the undertaker I, I believe had a broken foot too a broken toe something like that he broke something he, he hurt something in his leg and it's like how, how the hell do you keep going how do you and and mick foley kept going in the hell in a cell Jaden, give us your thoughts on that match that match was oh my god like <laughs> Pretty sure it was Jim Ross or no Jerry Lawler. It was Jim Ross sure. and Jerry Lawler. Jerry Lawler thought he was dead. Oh my! He said, "Oh my God, he's dead." He said, "He's dead." Cause look, it really looked like he was dead. He wasn't moving, and that's how crazy the match was. He got thrown through the cell. He got hit with thumbtacks. He got hit in the face with a chair, and it wasn't. It was accidentally. He accidentally hit his stuff in the face, and it wasn't no soft hit. If your tooth comes out of your nose, that's a hard hit. No, and it, he got thrown off the cell, and the cell was really high, no, and he went that, back no, first. And, and it's true what Moses Marquez says. Welcome, Moses. Uh, he says, "Don't forget the ballroom room, bro. I'm buried alive." It was two or three, three year long rivalry. It yeah, was it was really long. It rivalry. was a long rivalry these two had, had and that's what I'm saying. Matches. That that mankind was was able to keep up with trip with the Undertaker. A hundred. That's what I'm saying. I mean, so, but you know, <laughs> mankind was kind of and Triple H was fierce. Mankind was kind of a lunatic at the time. You no, know, he was very he much was a crazy. He was very, very. So if you're putting a lunatic, a lunatic, if you're putting a lunatic against the Undertaker, lunatics could keep up with anything. No, absolutely and no. Mankind, listen, but mankind it, was smart with it too. Mankind was smart. And listen, he mankind, he did he did it up. I, but in that honestly, matchup, when I first seen that, was I was amazing. Not, I was it was an amazing that. match, and I'm I'm surprised your godfather's not here because he's a huge he Stinker fan. Huge I'm sure he's fan. busy. You know, if he's probably busy, I understand. But uh, it was um, it was crazy. It was yeah, crazy back to see in that the match. days of unprotected chair, and yeah, really they didn't yeah. do like that. You used to really get smacked get over smacked. the head with a used chair. To get hard. Like really hard. I still remember there was this one time I seen where Sabu and John Cena had a match and Sabu threw a chair. Yeah, that's yeah, him. that that's those unprotected chair shots were crazy. Listen, I remember when Eddie Guerrero got hit with a shot and he just started gushing, like that's gushing what I'm saying. completely. That's, like those chair shots. Were holy dangerous. cow! And speaking of chair shots, Randy Orton had <laughs> caught The Undertaker with a, yeah, a chair shot. a long time shot. ago. That's another great match he had in the past. You know, The Undertaker's had many great matches. Oh, many great gosh. matches. But... These ones are unique, though. Very unique. When you talk about a match, a match that I have seen over and over and over, this match was ruled the greatest WrestleMania match of all time. I feel like this could possibly, in this era, this could possibly be the greatest match of all time. Well, possibly, possibly. yes. That's why I said possibly. Yes. Yep, he did. And uh, Eddie and JBL. Yep, he hit a vein over his over the place. Yep, he bled. He bled all over the place. He hit a vein in the head. 
It was bad. It was really bad. I'll show it to you later. Um, when this match, which we have on our number one spot in the top ten, WrestleMania 26, The Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels, The Streak versus The Career. Jaden, tell us about this matchup. Oh my God, this match was crazy. I was not expecting so many things. Shawn Michaels and Undertaker was probably the greatest pair to do this match. And this match was absolutely insane. These guys were going at it with each other. These guys were not giving up. And yes, this was absolute an absolute masterpiece. masterpiece. And this wasn't yes. one of those type of matches where it needed, it didn't need any chairs, no weapons, nothing. no blood. Nothing. This match was immaculate without any of those. It, it, it was a it, simple it, it, match. Listen, it's a what I it's, listen, it's what point. I call all the time. This match was an instant classic. Exactly. Like there was no. There was no if ands or buts about it. Like this match was was amazing. Like it went on for over almost an hour, and like the moves, the near falls, the flips, and wasn't then one of the cameramen get hit? Yeah, mm -hmm. and it was an accident too. The cameraman was too close, and Undertaker did the suicide dive. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I, I think it was part of the act, though. That was pretty think, yeah. cool, though. I'm not going to lie. That was a good way to put that in the match. Yeah. And that, that proves Undertaker had agility. He jumped no, over the top no, rope. Undertaker had some amazing Undertaker agility. Had, and he was tall. <laughs> Imagine now, having to catch now, now, the now, let me, now, let me ask you an important question now. Here's the million dollar question. Hmm. To, end this, to end this, what if, what if Shawn Michaels would have beat the Undertaker. Now I got a question for that too then. What if he still wanted to retire after that then? Then he would have retired on top, you know in fact he would have ended the streak. But then Undert been, Undertaker was Would it have been more significant look, if he beat the Undertaker, Undertaker while still, retiring on top? Undertaker still wasn't done wrestling. That's what I'm trying to say. No, that doesn't mean he would have been. He would have stopped wrestling. But that's what I'm saying. But what it I'm was saying best is, would he not to end would Shawn, But would Shawn Michaels still have been retired? That's what I'm trying to. That's what I don't know. That's what I'm saying. It's really difficult it's to answer difficult. that question. That's what I'm saying. That's the big. You can't because you can't really. That's say. the big what ifs. That's what I'm saying. You know what, what I mean? If he didn't retire, so I really can't answer but i feel like it would be crazy yes if he beat him i feel it like that sure would have been would a great be. guy it sure would to be. beat him but that would have been crazy yep so Jaden, our time is up here we had an amazing topic undertaker's top 10 greatest matches of all time 100 in our opinion these were the matches of all time Jaden, next week evolution of pro wrestling is going to bring to you fans live a very special event. Evolution of Pro Wrestling presents Champions of Evolution. What is that you say? Simple. Every single title that has been used in professional wrestling, bar none that we use mostly, that they use mostly, is going to be on the line on Champions of Evolution. You're going to have a match between the AEW WWE Universal, WWE Champion, New Japan Pro Wrestling, <clears throat> and Ring of Honor. A fatal five-way elimination main event to determine the winner of winner-take-all every single championship match. You are going to have Apollo Crews, the Intercontinental Champion, Sheamus, the, Intercon the uh, United States Champion, um... You're going to have the TNT champion, Miro. And I believe we're going to have another mystery opponent in that mix. You're going to have a women's main event. You're going to have Bianca Belair. You're going to have Rhea Ripley, the NXT current women's champion, who we will name soon. And the current AEW Women's Champion, who we name as well. Secret, secret, secret. So, which you guys probably already know who they are. Then, we're going to have a tag team match. AEW Tag Team Champions. WWE Raw Tag Team Champions. WWE SmackDown Tag Team Champions. And we're going to add former WCW Tag Team Champions to that mix. As 
WCW Tag Team Champions. Okay. Here's another one which fans are going to like. We are going to bring into the mix the World Heavyweight title, but the match is going to feature the Phenom, the Undertaker. You fans decide which dream match you want to see the Undertaker fight for the World Heavyweight or which title. Dream opponent which dream opponent, like? I should say. Which dream opponent? Then, last but not least, we are going to have a match called The Vault of Evolution. Six men, six women, all competing for the ladder match. You fans are going to mark out. You're going to decide how this match is going to go. We're going to go kicking, brawling, doing all that stuff like all we do it. best. And that's what's going to happen. That's what we're going to name the six men coming up next week and the six women. It's going to be amazing. And it's going to be men from AEW, WWF, WWE, uh, a, um, uh, Ring of Honor, New Japan. Six of the greatest superstars. Same thing with the women. Old school, new school. Let's get them in. A whole bunch. I hope you guys are ready for this event because, Jaden, we're ready to go at it. We're ready to go full force with this event next week. Oh, yeah. Champions of Evolution. Do not miss it. Thank you, wrestling fans, for joining us. Please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and TikTok. As you can see, we're coming up with TikTok videos all over the place. Also, please feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're going up there. We already got over 200 subscribers. Give us a like. Give us a share. Give us a comment and a subscription. We will gladly appreciate it. Thank you, wrestling fans. For myself, Lewis, the Encyclopedia of Pro Wrestling. AJ, the Whiz Kid of Pro Wrestling. And for my producer and director, my lovely wife, Yesenia. Thank you, fans, for watching. Have a good night, fans. See you next Friday.